Hey, it's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to move your website from one domain to another. Now, in this move, the only thing that's going to change is the domain name. All your content's going to be the same, your WordPress settings will be the same, your plugins, your themes, everything's the same. Even your permalinks will be the same. And we're just going to move the site. And we're going to do this manually. We're not going to use a plugin. I have another tutorial where it shows you how to do the plugin, but by doing it manually, you really understand what's going on with the WordPress site and you get more of an insight of how this stuff works. So the first thing we have to do is we have to prep our site for the transfer. So we're going to back up all the files and we're going to export our database. And then step two, we're going to put all those things onto the new server with a new domain name, new hosting account. So let's get started. So we have this site right here. This is the one I'm going to transfer. It's my WP PhD demo site, and I just have, I don't have a lot customized, I just really have the title here. This is our sandbox for the tagline, and this is about it. And we're gonna put it on this domain called Craft and Color. Just a random domain I have. I'm just refreshing the page so you can see that there's nothing here besides the domain name and the text, this is Craft in Color. In a few moments, well, probably a few minutes, it's going to look like this as we transfer our entire site to this domain. And we even have a few pages of content that will show you uh, if I can get back to the dashboard. So you can see that the content will be transferred and the permalinks will be maintained. So if we go to any one of these pages like the HTML page, we have this URL and this content here. And we're going to see that this URL stays the same. The permalink stays the same. Only thing that changes is the domain name. And you're going to see that in a few minutes. So let's get started. First thing we got to do is back up all the files on this WP-PhD site. So we do this, or I do this usually in the file manager. FTP takes too long to download them all. It takes forever, actually. So I usually go into my FTP. I find the root of the site. I select all of the files. I'm not going to choose that backup. So I select all the actual WordPress files. And then I click on Compress. I choose Zip. And then I click on Compress Files. Actually, first I'm going to choose a name. I'm just going to call it um, Backup for Transfer. .zip. And then click on Compress Files. And this usually takes a few minutes. If your site has a lot of content, it'll take a lot longer. And once that's done, I'm going to download that zip file. It's done already. You can go through all these. You don't really have to. Uh, click on Close. And then we have this file right here. I'm going to click on this download button to download that file. Now this file, it says down here is 34 megabytes. If it's bigger than two gigabytes, I believe, you cannot use the upload feature in the file manager. If your site's bigger than two gigabytes, you're going to have to use FTP to upload that to your new server. We'll talk about that more in a minute. Uh, so now that we have this file, or this zip file that contains all the site files, we need to get the database. So if we go back into the PHP, or sorry, the, the cPanel area, we want to go to PHP MyAdmin. And this is where all the databases that are in your hosting account are listed. If you have more than one, you want to make sure you, you're using the right database. So the way to find out which database you need is you go back into your file manager, you open the WP config file by clicking on it and then clicking on edit or code edit and this database name entry right here tells us what the name of the database is which is right here what I've highlighted in my case there's only one on this server anyway so it doesn't really matter but if you have more than one that's how you find the right database so we just want to click on that database to open it and here we have all of the contents of that database now make note of WPR4 as the prefix for this database. Yours will be different than that, but you want to make note of what your prefix is. It's the first thing before the first underscore. By default, it's going to be WP underscore, but if it's not the default value, we're going to have to make note of this to make this transfer work properly, and we'll get back to that as well in a minute. Next thing we want to do is export this whole database. So if we go to the export tab, we just, I, I usually use the, the quick option, SQL, exports the whole thing. And this is our database file. So we have down here our backup for transfer zip and our database backed up. So we have a full backup of our entire site right now. Now we want to go into 
the hosting account for the place we're transferring it to, which in this case is Craft and Color. And I'm hosting this site in Bluehost, which we see here. The other one is in InMotion hosting. So they're two different servers, two different hosts. And what, what I've done already, as you can tell, because this, this domain name is live, is I've added this domain name to my Bluehost account. If you need to add an add-on domain to your hosting account, I've linked to a tutorial below that shows you how to do that. So you want to make sure your domain is active on the new host before you do this transfer. So once we're in here, what we have to do is just like before, find the file manager, which is right here in this case. I'm just going to open the home directory and then we need to find the folder of the website we're uploading to. So we're uploading to craftandcolor.com in this demo and there's a folder in the PHP underscore public or sorry, public underscore HTML that is called craft in color right here. I'm going to open that, delete this index file. I'm going to make sure there's no files present in this root directory because we're going to upload our other files, the ones we just downloaded. So if I click on upload and click on choose file, it's going to be my downloads folder. Click on open to start uploading it. We've got a progress bar in the bottom right, it tells us how far along we are. And again, this will only work if you're uploading less than two gigabytes. If you're uploading more than two gigabytes, you're going to have to use an FTP client to upload. And it goes pretty quickly in this case because it's a small file size. So uploads done. Now we can close this tab. And if we refresh this file manager, we have our uploaded files here. If we click on it, then click on extract. It'll extract all those files right into this directory. And click on close when the extraction is done. Click on reload again. And we can delete this zip file that contained all the files. Now we have our content all there. Now what we have to do now is if we open the WP config file, we will see that this uh, the WP PhD, that is part of my previous hosting account. This is going to be different in the new hosting account. So we can't use these same database credentials. We have to make a new database and then import our old database into that new one. So if we go head back to our file manager, or sorry, our cPanel here, and we find the MySQL databases. Just gonna do a search for it. And here it is, MySQL databases. Click on that icon to open them so we can create a new database. And we want to make note of these credentials that we create. And I'm going to call this random characters, starting with DFW. I usually have my username and my database start with the same three random characters, or the same three characters, even if they're not random. So we create a new database called DFW. We scroll down, create a new user, starting with DFW, and then a bunch of other characters. I usually generate a password. That one looks great. Check this box. Otherwise, you can't click on use password. And then we create the user. And we successfully created the user for that account. And now I just want to make note of all the stuff we made. So our database name, which I should have copied earlier, but it didn't. Oops. Database username and uh, username password and the password is this because I copied that one database name or sorry the username is this and if we go back we're gonna find the database name which started with DFW let's just search for it over here and this is the database name and let's copy that put it in this file and now the last step we have to do is link the user to the database. So if we scroll right to the bottom of this page, we have this add a user to database section. I want to find the ones that have DFW in the front for both of them. This is why I have the same three random characters at the beginning. It makes it much easier to find when I'm linking them because I have a lot of sites on this server. And I'm going to choose all privileges, click on make changes. And we've successfully added the, those user or that user to that database. So that's great. 
click on go back. Now, if I head back to this WP config file, this is in our new host with a new domain. We open the old WP config file and we have to replace all these credentials with the new ones. So I'm just going to copy each one of these and paste them over what's there. And copy this one. And the password. All right, now those are in there. We can click on save. Now we have a database, but we just created that in the MySQL database creator. So it's a completely blank database right now. What we need to do is import the database that we exported earlier. So really the only reason we went through all that was just to have a database created. And now we're gonna go and delete that database or delete the contents of it. We're gonna keep the database, but delete the contents. So for that, we wanna go into the PHP my admin here we have our list of databases, which is quite extensive. And the DFW is the one we just created. Click on that to open it. As we can see, there are no tables found. If there were tables here, we would delete them. And then what we want to do is import using the import tab. We want to import the SQL database that we exported which in my case is this one right here. Click on open. Let me click on go at the bottom. And then we wait. And sometimes you don't wait too long, like this time here. Import was successfully finished, that's great. If we click on the structure tab, we now see our database just as it was on the other site. You'll notice again, the table prefix, very important, WPR4, that may not work for you. So if we go back into, depending how you ended up transferring this WP config file, you wanna make sure that the table prefix right here is set to the same value that it is set in the PHP my admin. So if this is one, two, three, four, underscore, and then the table names, you want to make sure that this is one, two, three, four underscore. So those have to be the same. Otherwise, this is going to blow up. Not blow up, it's just not going to work. There's one last very important thing that we have to do. And that is find the options table. Right here, WP options. Click on browse. When this is opened, you will see that the first two entries, there's one called site URL and one called home and those are set to the previous domain name. These have to be changed to the new domain name. And we do that by double clicking on it and just changing it, in this case, craft in color. It's gonna copy that whole thing, double click on the next one, paste it in there, craft in color. So now we have the site URL and the home URL updated. Now if we go back to our tab or go back to the site, if everything went well, uh, there's a caching issue on my Chrome. If I open Firefox, I can spell Firefox. Sometimes I find with Chrome there are caching issues. So even though it's showing that, it's not supposed to. So if we go craft in color in Firefox, and in fact, Firefox may have the same caching issues. I don't even know. Um, because I always, I always use Chrome and I go to Firefox to fix it. But as you can see, craftincolor.com is now our PHP or WP PHD website. And just to confirm that I'm not screwing around here, we go to Craft in Color in Chrome, go to that same website, and it's going to load WP PHD because it's cached. We get loaded in Firefox, it's not cached everything's gravy and we can also uh, we can even log in with the same credentials we use in WP PhD I don't even know what those are uh, I'll just go to login page 
and we'll figure it out. In fact, we won't figure it out, I have to go to my last pass. I'll be right back. All right, so I got my login credentials. And these would be the exact same login credentials that you used previously in your previous domain. Everything is the same except for the domain name is now changed. So you've moved your whole site, all the content. If you recall earlier, we looked at the pages area. We had our HTML table page. If we click on view, we see that the page is here just like it is over on the other one. So if you look at the domain names, this is wp-phd.com forward slash html dash table. The same slug, the same permalink, different domain name, same content. Now there's one thing you might encounter, which I encounter sometimes, and it might happen if I go to a different page. I was actually surprised it didn't happen there. It usually it does happen. If you go to view a page, it might show as broken. It didn't show it there either but it might show that that page couldn't be found on the server. And what you do to fix that, you pick the pages that did that by clicking the checkbox and you click on, let's just pick two, click on bulk actions and then edit, click on apply, change the status to draft and then update and then immediately select those same pages again, choose edit, click on apply, change the status to published. And even though Oh, this has to do with permalinks. So even though all your permalinks are transferred and they're all the same, there's still in the database, there's still some, some uh, hiccups sometimes that happen. Uh, as you saw in my case, it didn't happen, but I have seen it happen in the past. And the way to fix it, if you have that happen, if you have that error appear, which is this resource can't be found, I think is the error. You just change all the pages status, the ones that, exp that show that error to draft and then change it back to published and then that solves the problem. And again, that's due to the permalinks and the problem's easily solved. So in this video, we learned how to move a website from one domain name to another while keeping everything the same except for the domain name. Content's the same, database is the same, plugin the same, settings are the same, the uh, permalinks are the same, and that's uh, how quick and easy it can be done. I hope this video helps you. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Please make sure you like this video Subscribe to the YouTube channel, share on social media, and check out wplearnlab.com where we publish more tutorials like this every single day. Talk to you soon.